For decades, Asia was dismissed as an evolutionary backwater by those that favoured an Afro-European theatre of human evolution. But that narrow-minded, overly simplistic notion is being blown out of the water by brave scientists who are speaking the truth. Recent headlines have focused on the Yunxian skull of China as the possible one-million-year-old ancestor of modern humans, but buried within the study is another bombshell. Java Man, represented by the Sangyaran 17 skull, could be the 1.5-million-year-old ancestor of Yunxian Man and, in turn, the ancestor of all modern humans. This relationship has also been suggested by a series of posts by Chris Stringer, the co-author of the study, and a video posted by the BBC in association with the Natural History Museum. Previously, scientists thought that the first advanced humans were around a million years ago, with this species, Homo erectus. Around 600,000 years ago, they began to diverge into Neanderthals and our species, Homo sapiens. The Chinese fossil is around a million years old, so naturally researchers thought that it was Homo erectus. But the new analysis suggests that instead it belongs to completely separate species that existed alongside early versions of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. So what this means is that the entire timeline has shifted by half a million years. Advanced human evolution began much earlier than we previously thought. In the hills of central Java, where the monsoon rains carve deep red scars into the earth, a skull emerged that would quietly challenge the centre of human origins. It was not found in Africa, nor in the limestone caves of Europe, but beneath the tropical soil of Indonesia. The fossil would later be catalogued as Sangiran 17, the most complete skull of Homo erectus ever found in Asia. It sat in the palm of its discoverer like a time capsule from a vanished world dated to 1.5 million years old. Half a century later, scientists in China would reconstruct another skull, this one unearthed from the banks of the Han River in Hubei province, known as the Yunxian II cranium. Between these two faces of deep time, separated by nearly a million years of evolution and 2,000 miles of tropical and temperate forest, there is a striking possibility that the robust Javan Homo erectus of San Giran evolved into the large-brained transitional humans of Yunxian and that these ancient Asians, not their African cousins, stood at the true cradle of the modern human line. The Sangiran Dome, a tilted uplift of river sediment and volcanic ash in central Java, has yielded thousands of fossilized remains of early humans. When the skull, known as Sangiran 17, was uncovered in 1969, it was instantly recognized as a masterpiece of preservation. Unlike most fossil fragments that barely hint at a face, Sangiran 17 preserved nearly the entire cranial vault and face, including the heavy brow ridges, the dome-shaped brain case, and the solid jaw typical of Homo erectus. Its owner, a male who lived roughly 800,000 years ago, possessed a brain measuring just over 1,000 cubic centimetres, a capacity greater than any ape, but smaller than that of modern humans. Yet the skull revealed something more subtle than size alone proportion, balance, and refinement. The jaw was strong but not oversized, the teeth were smaller than expected. The brow ridges were heavy but elegantly arched. There was an emerging harmony between primitive strength and human grace. Java's Homo erectus population had long been considered an evolutionary backwater, marooned on an island at the edge of the known world. Yet Sangaran 17 defied that notion. It was a creature perfectly adapted to its environment its thick cranial bones and muscular neck, suggesting an upright walker with a powerful build, capable of shaping tools and thriving in a tropical world of rivers, bamboo and forest edges. These were not brutish relics. They were pioneers, the first to venture beyond Africa, the first to master fire and endurance, the first to take root in Asia's fertile heart. Fast forward a million years and thousands of kilometers north, where the plains of central China ripple with the memory of glaciers and lowest winds. In 1989 and 1990, Chinese archaeologists discovered two crushed crania embedded in river sediments near Yunxian County, Hubei province. The skulls were flattened and twisted, 
as though pressed beneath the weight of geological time. For decades they defied interpretation. Were they Homo erectus, like their cousins from Jukudia near Beijing, or did they belong to something more advanced? The mystery deepened when modern digital reconstruction techniques used in the early 21st century reassembled the shattered fragments. What emerged was a skull with a long, low vault like Homo erectus, but with a cranial capacity exceeding 1,100 cubic centimeters, larger than the typical Javan specimens and approaching early Homo sapiens. The face projected less, the cheekbones were flatter, the forehead higher, the skull rounder. It was still unmistakably archaic, but the seeds of modernity were there. The scientists who studied it saw something extraordinary, a transitional human form linking the old world of Homo erectus to the dawn of the modern human lineage. The Yonxian skulls, now dated to roughly one million years ago, were older than once believed. They stood at the crossroads between the primitive and the modern. The individual who wore that skull would have looked less like an ape-man and more like a powerful, heavy-browed human, his mind perhaps more curious, his gestures more deliberate, his world larger and more social. For the first time, Asia's fossils were hinting at something long denied them, a direct contribution to the human story. When Sangiran 17 and Yungxian 2 are compared side by side, the family resemblance is unmistakable. Both share the hallmark features of Homo erectus, the thick cranial walls, the pronounced brow ridges, the elongated skull, and the low forehead. But Yonxian too shows an evolution of these features, a widening of the brain case, a reduction in facial projection, and the first subtle rounding of the cranium that anticipates the globular skull of modern humans. Sangiran's skull measures about 20 centimeters from brow to occiput with a brain volume just over 1,000 cubic centimetres. Jungsian's, reconstructed digitally, stretches slightly longer and higher, enclosing nearly 150 cubic centimetres more brain tissue. This expansion represents more than simple growth. It signals a qualitative shift in brain organisation. The back of Jungsian's skull bulges more gently, the occipital region less sharply angled, suggesting changes in visual and spatial processing. The frontal bone rises more steeply, hinting at the early development of the regions associated with planning and language. The face of Yongxian, though still robust, tilts inward slightly beneath the brows, reducing the muzzle-like projection typical of earlier forms. If one were to trace a line through time from Sangiran 17 in the tropical south to Yongxian 2 in the temperate north, one could see the gradual emergence of the modern human skull shape. The change is not sudden or revolutionary, it is the slow, steady evolution of a lineage adapting to new environments, new challenges, and perhaps new levels of social complexity. Sangaran 17 could represent the sturdy foundation, Yonxian, the flowering crown. For more than a century, Africa has been celebrated as the birthplace of humanity. The earliest Homo sapiens fossils, dated to around 300,000 years ago, come from Morocco and Ethiopia. The genetic evidence points to an African origin as well, yet the Asian record tells another story, one that may run parallel, or even deeper. Long before those African fossils appeared, Southeast Asia had already nurtured populations of Homo erectus that were thriving, evolving, and possibly interbreeding with other lineages across the continent. Java's Homo erectus appeared nearly two million years ago, and persisted until as late as 100,000 years ago, overlapping in time with early modern humans. This incredible longevity, spanning more than 15 times the duration of our own species, suggests a stable, adaptable population. The idea that this lineage remained static is outdated. The Sangiran fossils show incremental increases in brain size and cranial sophistication over time. It is plausible that populations descended from these Javan ancestors spread northward during favourable climate periods, following river systems and coastal plains that stretched across what is now Southeast Asia and southern China. Over hundreds of thousands of years, isolation, adaptation and gene flow would have sculpted them into forms like Yungxian II, larger-brained, more cognitively advanced, and already walking the edge of modern humanity, if that were true then Southeast Asia was not a biological cul-de-sac, but the furnace of human evolution. From these islands and lowlands, 
Waves of archaic humans could have migrated north and west, intermingling with other groups, influencing the shape of later species such as the Denisovans and perhaps even modern Homo sapiens. The Jungian skull, with its blend of erectus-like strength and human-like intelligence, might then be a descendant of Sangiran 17 and a forerunner of us all. The evidence that our lineage was mostly in uh, Africa is based on an idea, I think, an assumption, a kind of inertial idea that our lineage has must have always been in Africa because Africa is the central center mm -hmm. of human history. But if you look at the archaeological evidence, it's not incredibly clear. And if you look at the genetic evidence, we have many early branches from Eurasia and only one from Africa. The gradual expansion of cranial capacity, combined with anatomical hints of finer motor control, suggests a brain reorganizing itself toward foresight and creativity. One can imagine the Sangiran man scanning the riverbank for stone nodules, flaking them to shape bamboo spears, his awareness bounded by the immediate world of food, shelter and group defense. A million years later, the Jungsian hunter might have imagined the movement of herds or the pattern of seasons, planning hunts and remembering distant places. The leap between them was not merely anatomical, it was mental. What makes the Asian record compelling is not only continuity but persistence. In Java, fossils from Gandong, possibly descendants of the Sangiran population, show that Homo erectus survived until less than 100,000 years ago. In China, the transitional forms at Yongxian predate both the later Jokudian Peking man and the even more advanced skulls of Dali and Harbin, the latter recently dubbed Homo Longi or Dragon Man. These fossils sketch a continuous evolutionary thread stretching from Sangiran to the northern plains. The possibility that this thread never broke, that it coiled and wove into the fabric of modern humans, challenges the long-standing assumption of Africa as the exclusive origin point. If Sangiran 17 truly represents an ancestral population that gave rise to Yongxian and beyond, then Southeast Asia deserves a new title. Not the end of migration, but the heart of transformation. Here, in the humid jungles and river valleys, early humans found the ecological diversity to evolve flexibility itself, the ultimate human trait. They learned to survive both monsoon and drought, mountain and mangrove. It was in such a testing ground that intelligence, endurance and adaptability could converge. When scientists compare the inner contours of Sangiran 17 skull to those of Jungsian, the continuity becomes visible. Endocasts, or digital moulds of the brain cavity, reveal similar configurations of the frontal lobes and parietal regions. Yet the Jungsian brain shows subtle expansions, areas linked with association and integration. The thickness of the cranial bone, once considered a primitive feature, is reduced slightly in Jungsian implying lighter structure without sacrificing protection. The base of the skull in Jungsian tilts differently, allowing the head to balance more vertically on the spine, a trait associated with longer necks and more upright posture. These shifts, though minute, mark steps toward modern human biomechanics. Even the face tells a story. Sangiran's cheekbones flare outward like a fortress wall, while Jungsian's curve more gently, pulling inward toward the nose. The jaws of Sanjaran were massive, suited to tough plant matter or raw meat, whereas Jungsian's teeth and palate appear smaller, perhaps reflecting the use of fire and cooking. Each refinement hints at a lineage learning to control its environment rather than being ruled by it. Though no DNA has yet been recovered from these ancient Asian fossils, their forms speak a genetic language written in bone. The Denisovans, an enigmatic population known from genetic traces in modern Papuans and Australians, may themselves have descended from these eastern archaic humans. The wide geographic range of Homo erectus in Asia, from Indonesia to northern China, created countless opportunities for isolation, hybridization and adaptation. If Sangiran represents the southern branch of this vast family, Jungsian could be its northern heir carrying forward traits that would one day merge into the gene pool of modern humanity. Modern genetic studies have revealed deep interbreeding between archaic and modern humans across Asia. 
The ancient genes for altitude tolerance in Tibetans, for instance, come from Denisovan ancestry. It is not impossible that the roots of those genes extend even further back, to populations like Yungxian, and perhaps to the original stock that began its long experiment in Java. The traditional map of human evolution flows outward from Africa like a river from its source. But perhaps the river has more than one spring. Imagine instead a braided delta of origins, with one channel emerging from Southeast Asia, another from Africa, and others from Eurasia, converging in the shared future of modern humanity. In this view, Sangiran 17 is not a dead end, but one of the first currents in that delta, a current that flows northward through time into Yunxian and beyond. This vision does not deny the importance of Africa, rather it widens the lens. Asia's record is older, richer and more diverse than once assumed. From Java to China, fossils show continuity of form and function that bridges the primitive and the modern. The Sangiran skull stands as the archetype of early adaptability, Yunxian as the threshold of transformation. Together, they sketch a story in which intelligence did not arise in isolation, but as a continental collaboration of lineages. If Southeast Asia gave rise to the traits that later blossomed into humanity, our endurance, our adaptability, our creativity, then the forests and riverbanks of Java and Hubei are sacred ground in the human story. They remind us that evolution is not a single spark, but a long chain of glowing embers passed from one hand to the next. Sangiran 17 might have belonged to a creature who could not imagine fire, but his descendants in Yungxian perhaps tended its light. From there that light would spread, north into the cold plains, east into the islands, west into the steppes, until it illuminated the minds of modern humans. The lineage that began in tropical Asia may have shaped the genetic and cultural capacities that define us. The journey from Sangiran to Yungxian to ourselves was not a simple migration. It was the evolution of awareness itself. There is a quiet irony in this possibility. For decades, the fossils of Asia were seen as derivative, mere echoes of the true evolution happening in Africa or Europe. But the bones refused to obey the story. They speak of independence, of ancient roots reaching back to a million years or more. If Sangiran 17 fathered Yungxian, and Yungxian in turn stood near the dawn of our own species, then the map of human origins may need redrawing. The tropical rainforests and island archipelagos, once thought peripheral, might instead be the birthplace of the mind. In the polished displays of museums, the skull of Sangiran 17 sits silent its heavy brow casting a shadow over the glass. Nearby, the reconstructed face of Yungxian gazes forward, eyes set beneath a higher forehead, lips neither ape nor man. Between them lies the story of a lineage that refused extinction, that adapted, expanded, and evolved until it reached consciousness. And if we listen closely to that silence, we might hear not a primitive echo but the first murmur of our own voice rising from the depths of Southeast Asia, calling itself human. Thank you for watching, and please click on these links for more videos on our human journey.